In this video, I'll show you how to use free materials from Quixel to create cool scenes, kind of like this one. But we'll walk through how to download 3D models and materials from Quixel for free and how to apply those in Blender. Quixel is a library from Epic Games that provides tons and tons of free materials. These are super helpful when putting together different environments or scenes in Blender. Okay, so the first step is we're going to gather our materials from Quixel. Um, we're just going to go to quixel.com and you can register here. And you have these different options for registering. I'm just going to go ahead and sign into my account. Uh, once you're signed in, you can just go to the Megascans library. Um, Megascans is really awesome. They just have a ton of completely free assets. Uh, so what I'm going to do is collect a few assets. So when you are downloading assets, you can actually select the asset and select the resolution here. So I'm going to grab 2K elements so they are not taking up too much space on my computer. I'm going to grab a few different Roman elements here. Um, I sped up the process right here. You can see I just downloaded quite a few different elements that I think might be relevant to a Roman scene. Okay, so now, so now that I have a few assets downloaded, I can go ahead and unzip them. And once they're unzipped, I can see in the folder, I have multiple FBXs. Um, you can see that the some of them have a larger file size, some of them have smaller file size. These ones are going to be more detailed, and these ones are going to have less detail in the model. They also have a normal displacement to go with the models, as well as roughness. So now I'm going to open up a Blender project. Just going to go ahead and open up a general project and delete everything that is here. I'm going to go ahead and right click over here and do a vertical split, creating a shader editor here on the right. And then I'm going to open up my finder with my Quixel assets and put this on the right side of my screen, allowing me to see everything at once. Um, and then I'm going to start with the shading. So I'm going to actually turn on the cycles renderer here so that I can have accurate shading. And just so that I can get good light while I'm working on these, I'm going to add an HDRI. I already have this one loaded in, Garden Nook. It is from HDRI Havens. If I type in here environment texture, I can go ahead and load one in. So what I'll do is just drag this from my folder, populate that, hit open, and I have an HDRI lighting my coin. So just to run through how to import something into Blender from Quixel, the first step is to file, import an FBX. Then you take that FBX file. I go with LOD zero usually. Um, so this one, um, this is the most complex of the models. You can see as you go higher in number at the end, LOD 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you get less complex of a model. Uh, this one's 512 KB, goes down to 59 KB. So just the complexity of the mesh. I'm going to select the one with the most complex mesh, 512, just because I want to get that detail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the material on this guy, create a new material. I'm going to just drag in the materials I want straight from this folder. So you can see here I have the roughness, normal, displacement, and albedo. The albedo is going to be my base color. Then the roughness is going to be exactly what it sounds like. I'm just going to plug that straight into roughness. And if you want more manipulation on that, you can add a color ramp in here um, to finesse that. Get it how you like. Then I'm going to add in a normal map. Drop it here. Plug it straight into normal. And between those two, I'm going to put a bump. The bump doesn't go into normal, it actually goes into height. I'm going to scale back the strength on that. And then for the displacement, it's also going to go into the normal. 
And how I'm going to do that is add a bump map here, plug the color into height once again, and then plug this normal into this normal. Um, so you have both of these affecting the normal. Also, going to take down the strength on this one until it looks closer to how I want it to. I'll try and get it pretty close to this preview. Um, so you can see some of these bumps in here are a little more intense in mine, so I'm going to take this down to 0.1. And take this to one two. Uh, maybe this is one one five. That looks about right to me. Um, so yeah, that's the gist of it. So I'm just going to do that for all my assets that I have here. What you can do is when you're loading in another FBX, you can use this current material for this one. So just select. Oops, just select the material you've already created. So, um, this one that has all the attributes you want. And then if you hit this duplicate button, it'll create a new one. So I will name it after this asset. So maybe some four. And instead of re importing all those textures, I can just drag them straight into. Um, each one of these nodes. So this is the albedo. So drag the albedo in here. This one is the roughness. Drag the roughness into here. This one is the normal. Put the normal in here. And this one is the displacement. Get the displacement in here. And once you do all that, you should be pretty close. You can. Uh, manipulate the strength of the bump to get closer to the preview. Uh, so I'm going to bump this up a little bit. On this one, it looks like. Um, and then you can also play with the roughness to get it closer to accurate. This one looks pretty good. Spread all the way out. Uh, so I'm just going to do that for the rest of them. So once you have all your assets set out, um, you can start putting together a scene using them. Uh, the rest of this video is just kind of a time lapse of me putting together a quick scene. Um, you can see I hop back in and grab a new HDRI as well as some materials from Quixel. Uh, the material process is pretty much exactly the same. The only new aspect of it is you have to think about the UV mapping. I also add here at the end a, um, a little bit of a volume scatter, which is pretty much just some uh, smoke, um, the blender equivalent of smoke. I also add in a flag here. I just found this SPQR Roman sign online. Um, did a little cloth simulation on it. And um, ended up getting rid of the letters in it. And then there you have it. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Um, see you in the next one.